We live in the information age, and out here in the West, we certainly live in an information economy. But what are the origins of the information age, and what can they tell us about its future? Information is the subject and title of the latest book from best-selling author James Glick. I sat down with him to talk about it. Today, it's an era where information has become the currency of our world. It's become the most important thing that we trade back and forth. Um, people used to think that money was the most important thing. Maybe some people still do, or energy. Uh, now information is the, I feel, the dominant focus of the most important aspects of our lives. I mean, for example, we realize that money is all about information. It's not, uh, it used to be a physical substance gold coins that you could store in boxes and then lose on ships at sea. But, but even then, it was a way of tokenizing information about who owns what. And now, in our era, that same information that used to take physical form is more likely to be um, coursing through the electronic wires and stored on digital computers, where it's, it seems more fragile and ethereal. But it's really still money, and it's still all about information. Now, you talk about uh, the problems that authors of dictionaries faced, you know, back in the day w when they were, you know, writing them the traditional way. These days, it seems almost that, that dictionaries and encyclopedias are open source rather than building from the top down. They're built from the bottom up. Could that have its own unforeseen problems? Yeah, that's an interesting way of looking at it. I have a, I have a whole chapter that's about two dictionaries. And one of the dictionaries is the first English dictionary published in 1604. It was about this big. I think it had a thousand words or two thousand words in it. And it was called A Table Alphabetical by Robert Caudry. Uh, and the other dictionary is the biggest dictionary of all, the Oxford English Dictionary, which uh, the last time it was printed had, I don't know how many volumes, a, a bookshelf uh, worth of volumes. But now it's not printed anymore. Now it's an online thing. And as you say, in a way, it's built from the bottom up because uh, the lexicographers at the Ox Oxford English Dictionary are not just reading books to look for words. They're listening to all of us as we speak in effect online. They use blogs as sources of words. And, um, and so they are able to see more clearly than the original dictionary could what a living, breathing organism the language is. But also, you know, the result of this is if you look at something like Wikipedia, information is constantly evolving. What are the implications of that? Wikipedia is another great example because, because here's a, a, a new giant online encyclopedia that for most of us has supplanted the printed encyclopedia. The printed encyclopedia used to, you're asking what the implications are, gave the impression of solidity and permanence. And Wikipedia is just the opposite. One thing everybody knows about Wikipedia is that you can't trust it at any given moment. Anything in it might have been inserted 15 minutes ago by a 15-year-old from his uh, PC in the garage, and it might change 15 minutes later when the grown-ups catch up with him. And yet, even though it's unreliable in any detail, overall, it's incredibly, incredibly reliable. And we have learned to trust it, because it turns out to be kind of self-correcting, in a way. And so, we have to come to grips with that. We have to come to grips with a, a, a more vivid view of what knowledge is. It's not something that's frozen in books anymore. The reality is there were mistakes in the Encyclopedia Britannica, too. The confluence of mobile, local, and social technology is creating a flood of new data that venture capitalists are betting will be valuable. What are some of the consequences of all of this data coming in, you know, whether it has meaning or not. Well, one thing we're starting to learn is that the value isn't in the data. The data are unreliable. And uh, I think where businesses are focusing their attention, or certainly should be focusing their attention, is helping people um, sort out, uh, find, find their way through the jungle. 
the biggest and most successful enterprises now of the information economy are the, the businesses that help us search for information in this data and filter the information that we don't need. That's what Google is. It's both a search engine and, less obviously, a filter. My interview with James Click, author of the book, The Information.